Hello everyone, Chaos here, and welcome to another Old School RuneScape video. In the previous one, we looked at ranged gear progression, and today we will do the same for magic. If you like this video, make sure to subscribe for more guides like these. But before we start, just like the previous video, I have a few disclaimers which are very important to disclose to give the video more context. As you can see, there's a lot of them, so I'll mention them relatively fast to avoid dragging them for too long. Number one, all the prices you see in this video are subject to change since the market is always fluctuating. Number two, I will assume you have base 40 stats to begin with and we will build up from there. Number three, this video is mostly aimed towards unrestricted accounts who can use the Grand Exchange, but Iron Man could still benefit from these tips. Number four, I will assume you have average wealth and that you are not either super rich or super poor. So all the upgrades you see here are fairly budget friendly until we get to the late game. Number five, I'm not going to include the Slayer helmet in this video since we are looking at strictly DPS outside Slayer, but you should always wear one when training the skill. Number six, none of these upgrades you see here are mandatory and you can follow your own path, but they are fairly standard in terms of DPS and defensive stats. And finally, number seven, I will not cover niche gear such as Void, since that one is not exactly useful in every single instance. It could be useful, but it's not best in slot. So with these disclaimers out of the way, Let's begin. If you remember from my 1 to 99 magic guide, I trained the skill with purely utility spells starting at around level 25. If you want a personal suggestion, training magic via combat isn't exactly convenient until around level 75, but I will still try my best at giving you a great progression path. I will have an honorable mention at the very beginning of the video in the form of the Tome of Fire. If you are really looking into magic training through combat, this item will increase your damage by a whopping 50 50% when using fire spells, so it's a good investment for your plan. Just keep in mind that charging it is not exactly cheap, and if you are using this item during the early levels, you will not make a lot of money back, so I recommend using this item only if you got both the book and some pages at Winter Toad, or if you have a ton of cash to blow and speed through the early levels. And as you can hear, I am pretty sick, but I just noticed that I forgot to talk about this item in my original recording, so let's get back in time when I wasn't sick. Starting off, the free-to-play magic gear is probably the most depressing out of all of them. I mean, just looking at this makes me feel kind of sad for free players. But sadness aside, we are going to completely revamp our magic gear once we get into member worlds. Starting with the cheap upgrades, you can get a Mystic Elemental Staff, a Brutal Shield, an Amulet of Glory, a Combat Bracelet, and a Blessing of your choice. Slightly more expensive but also immediate upgrades include a Seer's Ring, Wizard Boots, a Mystic Hat, Top and Bottom. If you can't afford all of these items in one go, that's the order in which I recommend buying them. We are then going to do the easy or medium RD diary for an upgrade to our cape for unlimited teleports near an altar. I then suggest getting 50 magic along with 55 slayer to be able to wear a slayer staff since it's a much better option compared to the mystic elemental staves. You should then do the horror from the deep quest and buy ancient pages in order to obtain the book of darkness for a great shield slot item in terms of offensive magic stats. And since we are in the mood for quests, if you don't have the Fremenic Trials completed, you could aim for this quest, as well as getting level 45 defense to be able to wear a Farseer helmet. Your gear is looking good enough to do Majorina 1 for one of the three god capes available, which are pretty much second best in slot for the cape item. I then recommend doing the Desert Treasure quest not only to unlock the Ancient Magic Spellbook, but also to obtain the Ancient Staff. After Desert Treasure, you should do a few more quests and aim for the Recipe for Disaster, which will give you the Barrow's Gloves, which is a great item to have at this point. We will now need a bit of GP for our next upgrades in the form of an Amulet of Fury and Infinity Boots. If you can't afford both items, buy the amulet first and then the boots later on. If you want more DPS, I recommend buying a Master Wand after reaching level 60 magic. The price is fairly steep, but at this level, it's pretty much the best upgrade you can get. We don't have a ton of content up to level 70, but this is where you unlock the best magic amulet in the game, which is the Occult Amulet at a measly 280k. So this is a mandatory upgrade as soon as you get level 70. You are also going to train defense up to level 70 when you unlock the Aaron's robes. These are pretty much second best in slot, so get them as soon as you can. We are then going to camp Nightmare Zone for a few hours to imbue the Seer's Ring to double its offensive stats. Level 75 magic is when the fun begins as we unlock the Trident weapons. I recommend going straight for the Trident of the Swamp and charging it for great damage output as well as ease of use. 
If you are curious, I have a video on the Trident up on my channel. Next, we are going to sink almost 9 million GP into getting our prayer up to level 77 and buy an arcane prayer scroll to unlock the augury prayer. Even though you will burn a lot of prayer potions, this is worth using at some bosses like Kraken, Scorpia and pretty much any boss that can be easily killed with the Trident. Our account is looking powerful enough to take on Mage Arena 2 and unlock the best magic cape in the game, the Imbued God Capes. Remember that this takes place in the wilderness, so only take items you are willing to lose. To increase magic DPS further, you are going to invest into a Tormented Bracelet, since it gives percent magic damage bonus and has great stats overall. Just remember to get your HP up to level 75. And speaking of 75, get level 75 defense for Eternal Boots, which cost an amazingly low 2 million GP, and these are the best magic boots in the game. For slightly more DPS, I recommend buying a Mage's Book at this point, and I put it almost at the end because it's not a huge difference compared to the Book of Darkness, but the upgrades that are coming next are ridiculously expensive. And also after the Mage's Book, I recommend getting an Imbued Heart to increase your magic level and do even more DPS when training. Starting with a Code I Want, this will increase your damage by an incredible amount and will give you unlimited water runes when wearing it, but it costs say whopping 85 million GP. However, it provides an amazing 15% bonus to your magic damage, which is overall insane. I then recommend getting level 90 magic, as it is one of the requirements for the Elite Current Diary for that Rodus Blessing 4. We now get into the most expensive upgrades, starting with Full Ancestral Armor, which will set you back 125 million GP. In my personal opinion, this is just a flex, and if you are looking to train Slayer casually, RMs should do okay. These robes are for people who put damage above anything else, like in Chambers of Zarek or even the Theater of Blood. And finally, we look into an Arcane Spirit Shield to further increase our magic accuracy. Just like the Ancestral Robes, this item is not crucial and it's mostly for people looking to maximize DPS. As an honorable mention, we have the Sanguinesti Staff, which is basically a trident that can heal you based on how much damage you do. The incredibly expensive Harmonized Nightmare Staff for quicker attacks at certain bosses, also to maximize DPS. And finally, the Ancient Wyvern Shield, which also gives you offensive magic stats and will protect you from dragon fire. And that's pretty much it. Hopefully you guys enjoyed and learned something new. If you disagree with anything I said, make sure to leave a comment below so we can discuss about it. Next week we will take a look at either variety topics such as the fastest way to max an account and some of the best skill cape perks in the game, or a few money making guides for both free to play, new members and even the average player. So head on over to the community poll to vote on what you would like to see next. Hopefully you guys are looking forward to that and to thank you very much for watching as well as for all of your recent support. I hope you guys have an amazing weekend and I hope to see you soon.